In 1932, the Buck Rogers radio program, notable as the first science fiction program on radio, hit the airwaves. It was broadcast in four separate runs with varying schedules. Initially broadcast as a 15-minute show on CBS in 1932, it was on a Monday through Thursday schedule. In 1936, it moved to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule and went off the air the same year. Mutual brought the show back and broadcast it three days a week from April to July 1939 and from May to July 1940, a 30-minute version was broadcast on Saturdays. From September 1946 to March 1947, Mutual aired a 15-minute version on weekday 623. The radio show again related the story of our hero but finding himself in the 25th century. Actors Matt Crowley, Curtis Arnold, Carl Frank and John Larkin all voiced him at various times. The beautiful and strong-willed Wilma Deering was portrayed by Adele Ronson, and the brilliant scientist inventor Dr. Her was played by Edgar Stelly. The radio series was produced and directed by Carlo D'Angelo and later by Jack Johnstone. But Rogers in the 25th Century! Buck Rogers is on the air, brought to you by the makers of Popsicle, Fudgicle, and Creamsicle, those delicious frozen confections on a stick. And now a message from the famous fellow who won the contest for the typical American boy, Popsicle Pete. Say, kids, seems like everybody's saving bags from Popsicle, Creamsicle, and Fudgicle and getting the dandiest free gifts. Get a free gift list in your ice cream store. It's full of colored pictures of the presents. Everybody loves Popsicle, Creamsicle, and Fudgicle on the handy stick. Mmm, are they good. So pure, so delicious, so downright refreshing. Gee, you're making my mouth water. Now they're full of energy, too. And a great big one costs only five cents. The biggest nickel's worth I ever saw. And remember, everything that goes into these great big luscious confections is the freshest and the finest. The kind of ingredients Mother uses in her own kitchen. Eat Popsicle, Fudgicle, and Creamsicle as often as you like. They help make you strong, but be sure you get the genuine. Look for the name Popsicle, Creamsicle, or Fudgicle printed on every bag. Save bags for free gifts every day. Save her gift list, too. It's got a coupon on it worth ten bags. Well, now with Kane and Ardella established in the headquarters at the ruins of ancient Philadelphia, with Black Barney under the influence of the psychic restriction ray, things promise to be pretty exciting. But let's first pick up Buck and Wilma aboard their rocket plane as it roars along on its way to Dr. Hewer's laboratory in Niagara. Here we go. Five hundred years into the future. Doggone it, Wilma. I certainly wish I knew why Dr. Hewer insisted we turn around and fly back to his laboratory this way. I know it, Buck. Just when we were beginning to get somewhere in our hunt for Black Bonnie. Right. That was a good, strong rocket trail we were following, too. And there was no question about it being his. Unless Killer Kane took that ship away from him. Wilma, that's a greater possibility than I care to admit. Yes, sir, you'll never convince me that Barney had run off with an experimental ship that way unless somebody forced him into it. And who could it be but Killer Kane? Right. And that's why I hated to leave the hot rocket trail we were following. Dr. Hewer knew we were on that trail, didn't he? Sure. I had Central Radio Bureau tell him we were. Then he must have something mighty important up his sleeve to make a turn back this way. Yeah. Well, we'll be at his laboratory in a couple of minutes now and find out what it's all about. Buck. Yeah? Why not radio to him? Plenty of time to do it before we land. I sure. Here, you take over the controls while I do it, will you please? Surely. Only you'd better keep cutting down on the power or we'll fly on by Niagara before we know it. Hey, I should say so. Do you know how fast we're traveling? How fast? A little over 1,200 miles an hour. Phew. That is stepping along, isn't it? You bet it is. Out in space with no air friction to heat up the hull or slow us down... It would be like crawling along. Down here, within the atmosphere, it's going some. Yeah. Well, you take care of navigation while I make this call. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is cut down the power. There. Calling V-121. Buck Rogers calling V-121. Of course, he may not have got back to his laboratory yet, Buck. Central Radio Bureau said he had just started when we talked to them. Well, calling V-121. Hello, Buck. Did you get my message through Central Radio? Why, yes, Doctor. And we're on our way into you now. Good. 
Well, then why are you calling? Oh, just to find out what this is all about. We were hot on Barney's rocket trail yes, and... Yes, uh... yes, I know, Buck. Well, yes, sir, and that trail was so fresh, the gas analyzer pointers were fairly popping off the dials. Yes, but Buck, I have an idea that finding Barney is going to be far more difficult than simply following up his rocket trail. Sure, Doctor, but it's the first thing for us to do in any case. No. Now, the first thing for you to do is to come back here to my laboratory. But why, sir? Tell you when you get back here. Now, come along. Okay. We'll be there in a minute. Signing off. Signing off. In a minute is right. Want to take over the controls? Yeah, thanks. We can start coasting to a landing in about two shakes. Well, take it easy. This ship isn't equipped with the gyrocosmic relativator, you know. I wish it was. Poor old Barney and Willie thought they were doing us a favor when they took off in the ship that was equipped with one. And right now, it'd be mighty handy to have it aboard here. Well, here we are. Yep. Hang on for landing. Now, let's go. Right with you. Oh, hello, Doctor. Here we are. Oh, come right in here, you two. Right, sir. Your radio call held me up a bit, but I'm finished with this thing in a minute. Oh, doctor, it's the gyrocosmic relativator. Don't tell me Black Barney and Willie came back here. Yes, doctor, when did they bring it back? They didn't. This is a brand new one. Oh, I thought it'd take weeks to put one of these things together, and that you'd need impenetrate from Pluto. Well, I used a few scraps I was able to salvage in the main power room of the Central Radio Bureau. Yeah. I've been spending every minute working on this. Well, I'm beginning to see the light. You had us come back here so so we could install this on our ship before continuing the search for Barney and Willie. Exactly. As long as his ship is so equipped, yours must be too. And Buck... Yeah? I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm of the opinion that Kane and Ardala must have something to do with the disappearance of Barney and Willie. We certainly agree with you on that, sir. Yes. There, now. A great day. You must have done some fast work on this thing. Yes. And under a real handicap in the limited amount of impenetrate at my disposal. What about the reports of impenetrate ore out near the city of Omaha? Yeah, I've heard about that too, Doctor. Yes, but the ore is so poor that an entirely new means of reduction must be developed to really make it worthwhile. Worth investigating, though. Well, I'm going to look into it at the very first opportunity. Meanwhile, our only sure source is the far-off planet Pluto. Hmm. We can't very well afford to lose this elevator, then, can we? No, sir. But uh, is there anything I can do to help you there? I'll fit the photoelectric cell unit into place, will you please? Yeah, sure. Uh, goes right in front of this gear system unit, doesn't it? That's right. You'll have to use the power vice to fit them together. Okay. But uh, how about fastening them? Oh, well, molecular tension will take care of that because of the extreme care with which they've been machined. Go right ahead and put them into the vice. Yes, sir. Help you carry, Buck? No, thanks. I can make it. Be sure the sections are accurately lined up before you try to fit them. Yeah, they're in perfect alignment. And here goes the vice that'll make the gyrocosmic relativator that'll help run down Kane and Ardella. Well, Barney, how do you feel now? Psychic witch fiction ray isn't so bad, is it? Uh, it's marvelous, Chief. Uh, just leave it on for a couple of hours or two more, will you? <laughs> Sounds to me as though he's had plenty, Kay. Right, Adela. You can hand it off. All right. All right. Get up now, Bonnie. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Chief. And I certainly appreciate your letting me get exposed to it. Yeah. Then perhaps you can be of some help to us now, eh? Oh, I'll try awful hard, Chief. That's the stuff. What we ought to do, Ardela, is get hold of Rogers and put him under the psychic restriction ray. Not a bad idea. Dumb as he is, I think he might really be of some use to us. Well, uh, Well? From now on, we've got to take it easy and carefully plan everything we're going to do. Uh, now, Bonnie. Huh? Uh, yeah, Chief. Go out to where we buried the rocket ship that has the gyro-cosmic relativator on it. Okay. Uh, take along a non-recoil energy projector so you can push the dirt and rocks away from the door of it and get aboard. And then what? Then take out the radio and bring it in here. But be sure you leave the path to the door of that rocket ship clear. How come? I want that ship to be ready for immediate takeoff, just as soon as it gets dark. Okay, Chief, I'll do it right away. Uh, only, uh... How about uh, bringing the ship up out of its hole onto the level ground? Not much. That would leave it in plain sight of anybody who might be flying around looking for us. Oh, yes. Hmm, having that natural waterfall out there to cover up the entrance to this headquarters is a real help. Yes, and right here in this old laboratory of... 
Professor Smith's, we have all the scientific apparatus we could possibly want, Ardela. Our setup is perfect. Well, what are we going to do with it? Before anything else, Ardela, we must send Barney out after supplies and equipment. Whoa, there, Kane. Wouldn't it be much safer for you to go? Not by a long shot. The minute anyone in this country saw me on the loose, every radio in America would start buzzing. But Barney's all right. People are used to seeing him around, and no matter what he might be doing, nobody would try to interfere with him. Yeah, I guess you're right. Of course I am. The only thing he'd have to do is stay clear of Niagara, where they know he's missing. Yeah, so far as that's concerned, though, they probably know he's disappeared in every city of the country. Ah, oh, Dale, uh, you seem to forget that our friend Barney is Prime Minister of Mars in his spare time. They wouldn't dare broadcast news of his disappearance in this day and age. Okay. What are you going to have him do? Go into a bunch of small towns and pick up all the weapons he can find. And bring us a good, fast space cruiser. What would he do with the ship we have now? Bring it along, too. It's equipped with magnetic grapples, isn't it? Yeah. Then all he needs to do is pick out a likely-looking battle cruiser, clamp onto it with the grapples, and bring it back here. How about the chances of his rocket trail being picked up? No chance. That ship carries a rocket dampener, which I hooked in. It leaves such a faint trail that the wind will blow it away within a few minutes. Isn't as though he were flying out in space, you know, where there's no wind and a rocket trail stays put. Okay, but don't you think this business of taking a lot of weapons from small towns is dangerous? Suppose somebody sees him taking them and gets suspicious. Then all he needs to do is doff his flying helmet, look official, and pass some remark about being hot on the trail of Killer Kane and Ardella. And what about the chances of Barney's trying to double-cross us? Don't worry. The psychic restriction ray has taken care of that. Well, there he is now. <laughs> and look at him. What happened to you, Barney? Well, I'm all right, Miss Ardella. Only I got kind of wet coming through the falls. Oh, why didn't you use a force ray to push the water aside? On account of I had to use both hands to carry this radio. Here you are. Did you get that wet, too? Yeah, Chief. I guess maybe it did a little. Then we'll have to wait for it to dry out. Well, maybe it'll work anyway. I'll plug it in and see. All right. Now, Barney. Yeah? Just as soon as it gets dark, I want you to go out and get us a lot of equipment from the small towns that lie to the west of us. Sure, Chief. Only what, wouldn't it be a good idea if I was to take along some atomic bombs with me? Atomic bombs? Sure. To blow up the municipal storehouse where I, I'm going to get the stuff. No, no, Barney. This is one time you'll have to go about it very quietly and unobtrusively. Yeah, very un... Huh? Now listen carefully, and I'll tell you what you're to get. For transportation, of course, you can use the rocket plane. That's equipped with each gyro... island. There you are, Doctor. The photoelectric cell unit is in. Fine, Doc. Bring it over here and we'll complete assembly of this gyrocosmic relativator. Right, sir. There there you are. Will this be as good as the one on the ship Barney took away? It's exactly the same, Wilma. With it, you'll be able to take off and immediately be going at tremendous speed without any loss of time for pickup. And Killer Kane, beware. Fasten the power terminal line, Buck, and it'll be all finished. Okay. There you are. Good. Now, it's all ready to be put aboard your space cruiser. Well, then, let's go. I want to get back on Barney's rocket trail before the wind blows it away. Right. Coming with us, Doctor? No, well, I'm afraid not. I'm, I'm very anxious to investigate the possible supply of impenetrate ore near Omaha just as quickly as I can. Which will mean more of these relativators. I hope so. You want to open the door for me, please, Wilma, so I can carry this one out to the ship? Surely, Buck. Uh, perhaps I'd better go out there with you to make sure you get it installed properly. I wish you would, Doctor. There you are, Buck. Thanks. Oh, look. What? Well, yes. And it's coming right down here. But, but... so fast. Who's at the controls? Whoever it is, he's going to crack up. Then look out, look out. Get back, Wilma. Here he comes. Look out. Well, I wonder who and what under the sun that was. But I certainly hope none of our friends got hurt. Fellas and girls, if you'd like a real treat, a wonderful treat, get yourself a creamsicle on a handy stick. Does that hit the spot? A great big chunk of delicious ice cream covered with chocolate fudge or pure fruit flavors. What a nickel's worth. Nourishing, cooling, and made fresh every day in only the best, sunny, inviting ice cream plants. Remember, whether you buy creamsicle, popsicle, or fudgicle, be sure they're genuine. Look for the U.S. registered trademark name printed right on the bag. Kids, save those bags. Get swell free gifts. Skets, skates, table tennis, a sleeping doll, a wristwatch... See, everything you always wanted, but start right away. Because the more bags you save, the better presents you get. 